So here we go. So differentials and error estimates. We are working on section 4.2 here. And yes, I know I need to adjust the due dates. That's on my list of things to do today. I will get to that. So you're a day behind due to my snow sick day last week. So just uh, a couple of definitions uh, in the examples I'm going to go over now. Uh, I've got a variable x, and x is some measurement. And then we've got a uh, dx. dx, remember, is a differential. A differential is a little bit different than a change in x, because a differential is typically a, 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 an infinitesimal change, like an unmeasurable small number, but it's not zero. Uh, but here, we're using dx to approximate uh, delta x. And delta x is an actual measurable change, like uh, 0.1, 1 tenth, or 1 hundredth. Uh, but we're going to use dx and delta x, kind of interchangeable here. But one's an approximation of the other. Um, and this right here is our measurement error, because nobody, no thing, ever measures perfectly. Oops. Measurement error. There's no such thing as a person perfect measurement, there's always a margin of error when we measure stuff. Delta y, now we have some function that we're using on this measurement, so that would just be the change in y. So uh, f of x uh, plus delta x, so dx minus f of x, right? That's the numerator of our difference quotient right here. And this ends up being our propagated error. Right, we make this measurement. There's a little error in our measurement, right? We're not sure what it is. We say the, the measurement's two, but it's really like close to two. Maybe it's 1.9 or 2.1 or closer. Uh, and then we do a calculation based on it. When we were actually hoping for the result of two, we actually have something that's slightly different. So what's the, the result? So we'll look at a couple of examples of that. And then dy is our estimate of delta y. And according to our work the other day, that's just uh, f prime of x times dx or delta x. And this is our estimated propagated error. So we're going to look at these examples here. So the function we'll take a look at first is let's suppose we're, we're making these square uh, objects uh, square metal plates, and we have a measurement about what we think the, the length and width of the square are. So that's our x, and then we want to take a look at what's the resulting, if we're off in our measurement, what's the resulting error in the area. So f of x in this case is going to be x squared, area of a square. Our, uh, we're going to have a, a, an error. So like, let's say we measure x, and we believe x is, say, 6 centimeters um, but we know we don't measure perfectly, and we're guessing that our error in measurement, dx, is we're either off by plus or minus, a little more, a little less, one-tenth. Okay, so so we, we think we measured six, but it's probably more like 5.9 or 6.1. However, we claim the measurement is six. Now, there's an actual error in the area, and that's going to be our delta y which is f of x plus delta x. So I'm just going to put that in with variables at first. So that would be x plus delta x squared and minus x squared. So we have our actual measurement versus our ideal measurement over here. And we can clean that up a little bit. So if we square that out, we'll get x squared plus 2x delta x is and delta x is a single variable here, uh, plus delta x squared. It's not delta times x, important distinction. And that cleans up a little bit more. The x squared subtract out. We just get 2x delta x plus delta x squared. So we've seen that before. So this right here, again, is our propagated error. So if we check that out for this situation here, uh, and again, that was a fair amount of work to calculate that, not too bad, just kind of depends.
depends on the function. Uh, here, our x was 6. So our, if we plug that in, we're going to get 2 times 6 times our, I'm just going to put in the plus version, 0 0.1, 1 tenth plus 1 tenth squared. That's going to give us 12, 1 tenth of 12 is 1.2. 1 1 tenth times 1 tenth is 1 hundredth. And so we get 1 and 2100. So this is our, this is the error in the area right there. So our area uh, is going to be off by plus or minus that amount. So the actual area, right, so this is my area function here, f of x. The actual area, or the change in area, I should say, is within 1.02 of the actual area, or 1.21, I'm sorry. So it could be low by 1.21 or up by 1.21. Right, so we started with an error of plus or minus 0.1. Now we have an error of plus or minus 1.21. So that's that propagation. And often errors get bigger uh, as we move through systems. So error is important. It's important to be able to monitor your error. Uh, other way we can look at this is with differentials. So if I look at dy, the approximation of that right there, that's f prime of x. So f prime of x in this case is just 2x uh, times dx. And our dx and our delta x, we're claiming they're both the same, 1 tenth. So in this particular case, I'm going to get 2 times 6 times 1 tenth, which is 1.2. So that's the dx. So notice that the, or the dy here, and which is our change in area, dA. So notice that our actual change in area at 6, where we believe our error is 1 tenth, is plus or minus 1.21. And our estimate, based on the derivative and differentials, that's dA that is plus or minus 1.2. And notice that they're not too far away from each other. Um, what's the actual area here? We'll just you know, double check. If we plug in 6 to our area function, the area when x is 6 is just 6 squared, or 36. So we think we have a square that's 6 by 6, and so its area would be 36 centimeter squared, for example. But actually, we made a, you know, we, our, our measurement wasn't perfect. So the actual area is, is plus or minus that 1.21. And let's go with the estimate of the 1.2 there. So either our area is somewhere up around 37.2 when we were claiming it's 36, or we could have been a little low when we measured our length here. So we could be on the other side. So that would be what, uh, 34.8 on the other side. So our actual area is somewhere in this range, but we're claiming it's 36. These numbers right here and here, those are called absolute measurements or absolute changes. So if this is measured in centimeters, then this number would also be measured in centimeters. Area is measured in centimeters squared. So these numbers here are square centimeters. And again, we started with an error of one tenth of a centimeter. Uh, as we proceeded through our system, we ended up with an error of 1.2 roughly square centimeters. And those are absolute numbers, which just come from differences. So absolute changes, that just means you come the difference of two numbers. Relative change. Switch to blue. sometimes called percent change, is whatever the absolute change is, 
divided by the original amount. So for our input, right, our measurements, our original measurement X, if we want to do the relative change, then we would take our margin of error, one tenth, and divide by the original amount. And then we can clean that up. That's going to be one sixtieth. And what's one sixtieth as a decimal? It's like um, zero point zero zero one six seven ish to four decimal places. Let's make sure we have that in my hand. Desmos zero point one over one six. So that is our uh, percent change. So as a percentage, right, I could rewrite that as 1.67%. So when I made my measurement, I believe I'm about 1.67% off. Uh, in it. And then we have our relative change in output, our propagated error, we're calculating. And we calculated that to be about 1.2, we use that one. The actual value should have been 36. So if I take my change divided by the original amount, let's see what that ends up being. That one looks like I use it in my head. So that one ends up being about 3.3%. Let's see 0.03 repeating. Let's say it's about that approximate. Which is about 3.3%. So we started with an error of about 1.67%, and then we ended up an error that is about 3% of uh, what we were hoping for in the end. So, this idea of trying to guess, estimate what your errors are in some system is important. So, I'm going to go back to that ball bearing problem I was talking about yesterday. I just started setting it up. All right, so we're manufacturing ball bearings. And let's say we have a five millimeter diameter that we're building. Now, when, when we measure these, we're, we're always going to be uh, a little bit off. And so let's suppose we're estimating that our error, our error in measurement of the radius, so x is the, uh, let's see. Oh, no, I want the five millimeters to be the radius, not the diameter. Radius, I'm going to call it radius x. So our error estimate is going to be one one hundredth. And what we want to see is if we think our machinery in terms of measuring the radius is off by about a hundredth of a millimeter. So meaning, meaning that the actual radius is somewhere between 5.01 millimeters and 4.99 millimeters we want to see, okay, what's the resulting change in volume? And we're going to estimate that with our, our differential. So first relationship here, volume is equal to four thirds pi r cubed for a sphere, and a ball bearing is, is a sphere. And our, we're going to estimate the propagated error And basically what we're doing is we're just using a tangent line approximation and then we're looking at how far off the tangent line is from the actual curve. So that's, that's essentially, which is what I was looking at yesterday. So that's going to be what we call dv and dv is just v prime of x times delta x. So v prime of x here, that's going to be, let's see, the four thirds pi is a constant. And then the derivative of r cubed with respect to, uh, that should be an x there. So I'm calling it 
x here the derivative of x cubed should just be 3x squared. And I'm taking the derivative of x with respect to x, so there's no chain rule to go on there. So I just get that. And this is the differential form, so I still have that dx hanging in. So here's my dv there. Cleans up just a little bit. So I could say that's 4 pi x squared dx. So for our propagated error then, given the initial information, the five millimeters and our dx at plus or minus uh, one hundredth of a millimeter. So our dv for this instant is four pi times five squared times that 0 0.01. And we can calculate that out. Pi times our radius squared times our differential error 0.1. So I get, oh yeah, that's funny. Four times five squared is 100 times one one hundred just leaves the pi behind. So we get about 3.14. That's the key. So we get an uh, an estimated propagated error of about 3.14 if I go to the nearest hundredth. And I'm going to go to the nearest hundredth because I have this much of it to the nearest hundredth. Uh, what are the units uh, of that measurement? That is a change in volume. So that would be, in this case, millimeters cubed. And this is my error in volume. So my belief is that dv is approximately equal to delta v, and they are going to be reasonably close for small values of dx. So I believe that dv is within 3.4 of the actual volume. So I could be 3.14 over, or I could be 3.14 under the actual volume. So this is what we call an absolute measurement because it's really just a difference. Remember, dv is the actual v of x plus dx minus v of x. And the dx is, is a, a plus or minus, right? So it could go either way. I could be above or below that. Um, and here's my volume formula. So we could actually calculate that out, but that's a lot more work than this version right here, right? So that would be to take 4 thirds pi times x plus dx cubed minus 4 thirds pi x cubed. So we'd have to multiply this x times dx by itself three times with this big long polynomial subtract 4 pi, right? This is work, a lot of work. But as long as dx is small, dv and delta v are going to be pretty close together. So we're using, we're just saying, hey, this is too much work. We're just going to do this easier route here, and it's going to be close enough to the actual error and volume. So this is, again, estimated because I've used d, the derivative, instead of the actual change, that subtraction of those polynomials. Uh, as far as relative error goes, relative or percent error. That means to take your estimated change here and divide by the original. So what's 3.14 divided by the volume you were hoping to get. So if the measurement was actually five, then that would be just four thirds pi times five squared. And so let's check that out. So essentially, I'm estimating that my, my change in volume is about pi, my error in volume. If I, div oops, if I divide that by the actual volume, 4 thirds pi times the radius squared. If I use the 3.14, like I estimated, it'll look a little bit different, but it's about 3 hundredths. So this right here, 
So about three hundredths. And again, that's a relative error. So that would be 3%. If we look at the error in the beginning, what is, so relative error x, that would be dx over x, which would be 1 hundredth divided by 5. 5 when it looks like going to be 0 0.01 over 5, 0 0.02, so two thousandths. So this up here is two thousandths as a percentage, that would be 0.2%. So we start off with a relative error in our measurement, right? So we're, we have a machine that's physically measuring the radius of these balls. And the error in volume, right, the amount of metal that goes into producing these balls, I go from an error of, of, of the radius of, of two tenths of a percent, and I end up with a 3% error in the actual size of the product. Um, so these are important things to do. What's the point here? Well, the point is the actual change in volume is uh, generally a lot of work to do. Um, the derivative, the estimate in that change in, in output, change in volume, that's a little easier calculation for the most part. So we're using this differential as an approximation. What does that look like graphically? I think I'm going to use one of the homework questions uh, to estimate that in just a sec. All right, so that's the ball bearing problem. All right, so then there are a couple of homework questions. Let's see. Three, eight, and nine. So we have our delta x and we have our x, and then we want to use a linear approximation to estimate uh, dy. Sure, that's pretty much uh, like the problem that we just did. Let's copy that. And then we'll do one of the other two. And we have x and four. So I just want to look at a quick graphical version of this. And let's use geodrive today. And what was that? Two x squared plus five x plus four. So, yeah. X squared plus 5x plus 4. And I want to rescale so that I can see the point when x is 4. There we go. So then we want the point 4, comma f of 4, which is right there. And we're going to use a, a tangent line approximation to estimate uh, a change in error on, on a calculation of this. So this is some process we go through. We initially measure something and say it's like four centimeters, but we know we have an error in our measurement. And here we're claiming the error in measurement is about four tenths uh, if x was four. We want to estimate the change in output. So again, it says use a linear approximation, which means differential. And I'll draw a zoomed in sketch of this too here. So we've got this function that curves. So let's say that's our function. And here's our point for f of four right there. We then run a tangent line on that. And let's say that, oops, I'm gonna choose a different color for that. And let me switch colors right in front. Oh, come on. Time. All right, let's say that's our tangent line right there to the best of my ability. Uh, in this picture here, let's draw an x and a y axis. So let's say that's my x axis, that's my y axis. 
this is my x equals 4 here. I'm just going to call that x here. And this over here would be my f of x. But then I have, I know that I'm off a little. So I could be plus uh, delta x on this side, or I could be minus delta x on that side when I actually made the measurement. So my, my actual x is somewhere in this range. I think it's that number. Like I think it's 4, but it's not. It's a little above or below. And for this example, we we're saying delta x is 0. Now, the, the tangent line has a slope here, which is matching the slope of the function. And the slope of the tangent line is dy over dx. And I should make that triangle a little smaller. Fix this, make believe delta x actually went out this far to match that over there. So dy would be this height right here. Now, in the function, if I let's say my measurement's way out here on the extreme of what I think it should be, that y value is way up here. So this right here would be my f of x plus delta x. And the change from there down to what I was hoping for here, that's our delta y. So delta y will sometimes be bigger or smaller, it depends on the situation, than dy. Uh, in this case, the actual change, if my measurement really is that far off from what I was hoping, uh, is this much. dy is a little bit smaller here. So we're letting dy approximate delta y is what we're asked to do here. And dy just says, hey, here's your slope. Adjust with dx to figure out what dy is. So just multiply by dx. So we're just using the slope as a proportion here. So my slope function here is 4x plus 5 times my dx. And my dx is my delta x in this case and x is 4, so I just plug in 4. 4 times 4 plus 5 times 0 0.4 equals 16 plus 5, which is what, 21 times 0 0.4. That in my head, it's going to be like, what, 8.4? So that's my estimate and how far the end result off is. So if we, here, if we start here with a measurement error, of 4 tenths, we're going to get this propagated error of 8 and 4 tenths, right? So the error got much bigger as it went through our process here. And again, it's easier to use the differential approximation than it is to do the whole f of x plus dx minus f of x in general. So this is the actual change, dy, this number. We use the differential approximation here, which is this number right there. So that's all we're asked to do. Tangent line approximation of the error in output. All right, one more of these. Move on. Let's see, the other ones were um, okay, I've got an error. Let's see, Kelsey, I did plus five instead of four. Um, I missed that note. Desmos, I mistyped something. I missed your chat message here. Okay. Turns out it didn't matter. All right, so let's see. Um, number eight instead of nine, just in decimals. Okay. So, look. 
case. So linear approximation of the tangent line uh, of you know, use a linear approximation that is a tangent line to approximate 4.9 to the fourth power, uh, 4, 5. Yeah, so I, I did an example of this yesterday when I calculated a square root um, by a linear estimate. So, and I don't know how helpful Desmos is going to be on this one. Right, screenshots. go. All right, so we are going to, without, so imagine, the one, one way to think about it is this, is how does a calculator compute 4.9 to the fourth? Um, we have this process where we're gonna take 4.9 times 4.9 times 4.9, and calculators don't always do the same algorithms that humans do, because sometimes there are quicker ways to do it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna approximate this product without actually doing that product out. And the way we can do that is with a tangent line approximation. So I know that f of x is equal to x to the fourth power. That means f prime of x, the rate of change is four x cubed. So uh, one thing here is instead of raising something to the fourth power, I only have to raise it to the third power. Uh, and we're gonna use five, which is an easier number than 4.9. So here we're saying X is five, delta X is negative 0 0.1. So if you add X to delta X, you get that 4.9 right there. X plus X delta X is 4.9. So that's what we're thinking about right here. So we want to then find the tangent line. So that would just be the Y minus, oops, y minus f of 5 equals our slope for 5 cubed times x minus 5. So we're going to use a linear approximation of the fourth power here, but with 5, which is an easier number to multiply out than 4.9. So uh, f of 5 would be 5 to the fourth power. So let's see, that'd be 25 times 25. 625. So we get y minus 625. Double check I did that right. 5, 5 squared is 25. Cube is 125. Fourth power is 625. Uh, so over here, I have 4 times 125, which is going to be 500 times x minus 5. So then y equals. 500x minus 5 times 5 is 2,500 plus that 625. So 2,500 minus 625 is what? 5, 7. One thousand eight hundred seventy-five, but negative. So now I get y equals five hundred times x minus one thousand eight hundred seventy-five. All right. Hopefully, I did that right there. And then we're going to estimate four point nine squared by just plugging it into this. So our belief is that this is the tangent line uh, at x equals five. So if we pick a number close to five plugging that x value into here should give us a pretty similar answer. So 500 times 4.9 minus 1875. And I think I'll do this part with a calculator. Eighteen seventy-five. 
So then I believe that the square of 4.9 is around uh, 575. I'm sorry, the fourth power. So we can just check that. So that's my estimate. 4.9, the fourth power is 576.8. So I'm pretty close. So this calculation by hand is easier than this calculation right here. And that's kind of the point of these things right here. So I would say 4.9 squared is about 575. That's my linear approximation of the tangent line. So if we really wanted to zoom in on that, so this is really a harder problem doing Desmos. We were looking at x raised to the fourth when x is five. So I guess I need to minus x. And I'm considering the points five comma f of five. So I have to zoom to get that. And so that means I need to change the scale. Yeah, so I wouldn't recommend this problem in Desmos. Let's go from one to seven. And then sure that's fine there, but up here I need to go to like a thousand. See that. So there's that point. And then we claim that y equals 500x minus 1875 is the tangent line there. And that looks pretty good. And the point here is if we take any x value that's close to 5 and plug it into our linear equation here, that we should get uh, the, the fourth power approximately without having to actually take a fourth power. All right, so moving on.